And it, this is a good moment to talk about this because the election is over. Some of our passions have cooled a little bit. It's distressing how outraged everybody is. I mean, all weekend long, all weekend long, I was looking at Twitter and I, I finally got off Twitter. I just stopped going on. But everything, everything outrages people. Every single thing outrages people. So it's like, you know, President uh, Trump uh, didn't go to some service in France to celebrate. Oh, my God, I'm outraged. And he said something about the, the way the uh, forest is handled in California, which is actually true. It is a problem that causes some of these wildfires. Oh, I'm outraged. He smiled when Putin came in. Oh, I'm outraged. It's like everything. It's, you just think like, turn it the hell off, you know? I mean, turn it down, pal. You don't have to be outraged about every single thing. And that's why it really was, it really was a delight to see Dan Crenshaw go on. Did you see this where Dan Crenshaw went on? Remember Pete Davidson, the comedian, he does this, this thing, this routine on the evening update, and it's called uh, First Impressions, when he looks at somebody's face and makes stupid jokes about you know, how stupid they look. And they're all directed at Republicans and none of them are directed at Democrats. And he made one about Dan Crenshaw, who was at the time running for and has now won a congressional seat in Texas and who lost his eye uh, fighting in Afghanistan. It was, I think it was his third tour. And then when his eye, when they told me he was going to be blind, his, he got his sight back and he went back in. And everybody said, you know, this was a bad thing to do. Left and right all said, look, it, it's an ugly, stupid joke. You shouldn't have made it. And Davidson actually apologized. And Pete Davidson actually apologized. And he seemed actually to mean it. He went on and he apologized. And then Crenshaw himself showed up on the show. And if any good came of this, maybe it was that for one day, the left and the right finally came together to agree on something. <laughs> that I'm a d <laughs> And then they started zinging each other back and forth. And it was genuinely funny. It was genuinely cute stuff. Crenshaw was very good at it. He knew what he was doing. And, and you know, they then actually moved on to deliver a serious message. And let, let me just play that first, and then I'll, I'll tell you what I think about this, because it really was, it was an interesting moment, and interesting how rare it is these days when basically, uh, you know, everybody stands his ground and everybody hates everybody else. Let's, let's, let's play this. You are in it with them, not separated by some imaginary barrier between civilians and veterans, but connected together as grateful fellow Americans. We'll never forget the sacrifices made by veterans past and present, and never forget those we lost on 9-11, heroes like Pete's father. So I'll just say, Pete, never forget. Never forget. Uh, see, uh, you know, you can, you can make fun of this as a kumbaya moment. You can uh, be overly sentimental about it. I think it's simply a good thing. It is a good thing. Guy made a mistake. He's a comedian. He's supposed to push the limits. We all get this. My objection is always that there's only pushing the limits in one direction. They're not always pushing the limits to the left, never to the right. That is a problem, but it's not his problem. I mean, he's just part of this uh, system. He is not the creators of the system. It would be the guys who are his bosses who could hire some conservative com comedians to make that balance. 